Lesson 14, Stem and Leaf Plot, Example 2. Use the age data, question 4, from our Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey to construct a stem and leaf plot and describe the result. So first we're going to construct a stem and leaf plot using this data, and then when we're done, we'll use words to describe the result. In order to construct a stem and leaf plot, the location of the separation point within the data value digits must be determined. So we'll take a look at the age of Sierra College statistics students in our student survey from question four. And we see that we have two digit data values. So a logical separation would be between these two digits, in this case, between the tens and the ones place value. But that's not the only choice. You could choose to separate these data values between the hundreds and the tenths place. In this case, since nobody was in their hundreds, we need to use leading zeros in the stem and leaf plot. Or we could use a separation between the ones and the tenths place value. And since nobody reported ages in tenths of a year, then uh, trailing zeros would need to be included in the stem and leaf plot. But I think the choice between the tens and the ones place value, separating the two digit numbers in this fashion would produce a pretty good stem and leaf plot. So we'll draw our vertical line that represents the separation of the digits, and that will, separation will take place between the tens and the ones place value. The first stem in the stem and leaf plot always corresponds to the minimum data value. So in this case, the minimum age or youngest student was 17 and the 17-year-old had a stem value of 1. The last stem value in the stem and leaf plot always corresponds to the maximum data value, and the maximum age or older student was 53, and the 53-year-old has a stem value of 5. So here in the stem and leaf plot, we need to go from a stem value of 1 to a stem value of 5. If we list these stem values one at a time by going 1, 2, 3, four, five, we've produced a stem and leaf plot that has five stem values, which is neither too few nor too many. So this would be an acceptable choice for a stem and leaf plot. When we list each stem value one digit at a time, the remaining 10 digits of the leaves all have to be displayed next to each stem value. So each single stem value could be displayed potential 10 leaf values, 0 through 9, next to each one, depending on if data values occur in those instances or not. Another choice that could be made is instead of listing each stem value one at a time, we could list stem values two at a time. When stem values are listed two at a time, the 10 digits for leaves are split equally in half, and the first half of digits, 0 through 4, are displayed next to the first instance of the stem value, and the second half of leaf values, 5 through 9, are displayed next to the second instance of the stem value. And so each of the double stem values can be plotted in this fashion, where 0 through 4 gets displayed next to the first listing, and 5 through 9 next to the second listing of each stem value. In this instance, we will have 10 stem values, which again is neither too few nor too many. So this would also produce a pretty acceptable stem and leaf plot. So let's use this choice here. So the first student in the student survey was 20 years old. And the 20 year old has a stem value of two and a leaf value of zero. So the 20 year old gets plotted in the stem and leaf plot next to the first instance of the stem value two, using the corresponding value of zero for the 20 year old. The second student was 19. 19 year old has a one for the stem value and a nine for the leaf value. A leaf value of nine falls in the upper half of digits, so it gets plotted next to the second instance of the one. So the 19 year old gets displayed here. The next student was 21. And the 21 year old gets displayed next to the first instance of the two with a leaf value of one. The next student was also 21, so we have another 21-year-old, and then a third 21-year-old. 20-year-olds also gets displayed in that same stem row, 
another 20 year old, 53. The 53 year old has a five for its stem value, a three for the leaf value. Three is in the lower half of digits, zero through four. So the 53 year old gets displayed next to the first instance of the five as five and a three. Next student was 20 and then a 22 year old. The 38 year old student has a stem value of three, a leaf value of eight. Eight is in the upper half of digits, five through nine. So it gets displayed next to the second instance of three in the stem value as three, eight for the 38 year old. The next student was 40. 40 year old has a four as its stem value, zero for the leaf value. So the first instance of the stem value of four, the 40 year old is plotted next to that one. And then we have an 18 year old and 17 and 20 and so on and so forth. So we go through all the data for the entire sample, plotting the leaf value across from the corresponding stem value as we go. The first instance of the stem value is for the lower half of digits, zero through four, and the second stem value is for the upper half of digits, five through nine, because we chose to do a double stem plot. So here's the 29 year old gets displayed, a 20 year old, and finally the last student, 22. So here's our stem and leaf plot. But we use the actual sample data, which was a random sample. So the data was in random order. Stem and leaf plots, we require to have the data sorted numerically. So since we didn't take the time to sort the data first, and we create our stem and leaf plot, we need to redraw our stem and leaf plot, taking the time to sort the data. So for the students who were uh, 15 to 19 years of age, we need to sort those starting with the youngest, which was 17, oldest, which was 19. So we could put them in order with the 17 year olds first, 18 year olds next, and 19 year olds last. And then for the students in their lower 20s, 20 to 24 years of age, we need to sort these uh, leaf values, starting with zeros first, followed by ones, then all the twos, and then threes, and finally the four. The students in their upper 20s, the 25 to 29 year old, we need to sort those stem values and leaf values, starting with the lowest one was five, and then the six, and then the oldest ones in that group, nine. And as we go through the rest, all the different uh, leaf values are already sorted. So here's our stem and leaf plot. Now the first stem value corresponds to the minimum data value. There were no uh, students that were aged 10 through 14. So the first instance of the one in the stem and leaf plot is not required. There were no students who were 55 to 59 years of age in this sample. So the second instance of the five in this double stem and leaf plot is not required either. So none of the instances prior to the minimum data values required, and none of the instances bigger than the maximum data value are required. But if you notice students in their upper 40s, the 45 to 49 year olds, there were no students in that age range either. But we do not eliminate this from the stem and leaf plot. If there's any stem values in between the minimum data value and the maximum data value for which no data occurs, we still include that in the graph. Because if it was to be eliminated, it would actually pull the 53 year old closer to the rest of the students, giving the appearance that that age wasn't nearly as far away from the rest of the data. We don't want that to occur. So we need to leave any gaps of missing data in between the minimum data value and the maximum data value need to remain in the graph to maintain that shape or distribution. So here's our completed stem and leaf plot. All we need is the title. So the age of Sierra College elementary statistics students would be a title for this graph. And now that we have our completed stem and leaf plot, we can describe our results. Here, it's noticeable that the majority of elementary statistics students at Sierra College are in their early 20s, that is 20 to 24 years of old age. Uh, the students that were younger than that were in their teens, late teens, but it doesn't extend very far below that. But students uh, above their mid-20s 
in age did exist all through their upper 20s, 30s, 40s, into the early 50s. So here, the ages do extend much further in this increasing or positive direction. This type of asymmetric distribution, where it extends much further in the increasing or positive direction, is referred to as a positively skewed distribution. So when we make our description, we can say, the age of Sierra College elementary statistics students has a positively skewed shape distribution.